Shalom, friends. This week, we're reading Parsha Tetzaveh, which deals primarily with the priestly garments, the big day kahuna, uh, and their construction and their exact parameters. And then we'll have a special maftir reading uh, called Parashat Zachor. We read Parashat Zachor every year in the Shabbat immediately preceding Purim. Uh, and this reminds us of the mitzvah of remembering what Amalek did to us. Amalek was this uh, desert raider people that ambushed us on the way out of Egypt, and it was quite a traumatic uh, event. And we're, in, we're told by God that we need to remember what they did to us. And we bind this to Purim because Haman and his desire to kill all the Jews was an Amalekite. He was a descendant of Agag, uh, the Amalekite king in the days of Saul, which we read about in the Haftarah. So every year nearly, we read these two parashot together, except on leap years. So the question is, what are they doing together? Why are Parshat Tetzaveh and Parshat Zachor bound? What is the common thread? What binds them together? Because on the outside, it doesn't really make sense why the priestly garments and the, the remembering of a Amalek. Well, the first level is a historical connection. Our sages tell us in the Gemara, in Megillah 11b, that Ahasuerus wore the priestly garments at his great, great feast that he invited everybody to at the beginning of the, of the Megillah. And that he wore specifically the priestly garments because he had calculated that the 70, day, 70 years of exile had ended, and since the Jews weren't redeemed, they weren't going to be redeemed. And in a certain way, his big party was a victory party where he thought he had defeated Hashem. Ah, he has defeated God, and now he's going to wear the priestly garments to sort of flaunt uh, his defeat of Hashem. And we can also see that the same words are used to describe the priestly garments as are used to describe Ahasuerus' party. Here it says that you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for honor and for beauty, lechavod ul tiferet. tiferet. And we see also that when Ahasuerus is showing off, he shows off at Osha Kavod Malchutovet Yakar Tiferet Gedulato that these same words are being used to describe uh, his lavish party. And so we, they, the sages understood from this that uh, part of what he was doing at that party was you drinking from the holy vessels of the temple and wearing the priestly garments. There's another layer, however, which is about a thematic connection. If we look at, uh, if we look at the attack of Amalek as it appears at the end of Parshat B'Shalach, the context of the attack is actually really, really striking. We were there, we hadn't, uh, hadn't found water, we were thirsty, we started arguing with God, and it says to us, and we, he called the place Masa Umariva, which means test and, and quarrel, uh, because of the quarrel that B'nai Israel had with Hashem when they tested God, saying, is, there, is God with us? Is, is, is God among us or not? Is, there, is Hashem with us or not? And then immediately, as soon as we ask that question, we doubt whether Hashem is with us. And that moment of doubt and confusion, Amalek attacked, uh, and they, they did unspeakably terrible things to, to, uh, to the Jewish people, especially those who were straggling outside the camp. Now, if the doubt of is Hashem with us or not, is the pretext of Amalek's attack. So it makes sense that we're reading uh, Parshat Tetzaveh when we're remembering Amalek's attack, because at the end of Parshat Tetzaveh, God gives us a sort of a summary of the whole purpose of the Mishkan and of the priestly garments. And it says, in Vayaduki ani Hashem lohayam, They will know that I am Hashem, their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I dwell among them. Ani Hashem I am the Lord their God. He says that I will dwell among them. And we will know that he dwells among us. And that knowledge uh, that God dwells among us, this is the whole purpose of the Big Day Kahuna and of, uh, and of the Mishkan. Uh, and so it makes perfect sense that the Mishkan is the antidote to the doubt which leaves us vulnerable to Amalek's attack. Now, I think that there's another layer that gets really into the Kishka's of uh, what? It, why do we need a priest? Uh, why do we need priestly garments? And, and what was so terrible about this attack? Uh, and if you want to hear about that, I invite you to come a Shabbat afternoon uh, before Minchad, five o'clock, and we'll be taking another layer deeper uh, about emotional trauma and how the Mishkan helps us to release that, uh, and how remembering a Malik uh, is also a critical piece of releasing the emotional trauma stored in the, up by the Jewish people after 2,000 years of exile. Shabbat Shalom, friends.